Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to God is Speaking. Today, I want to talk a little bit about prayer. I'm going to do a little short message here, but also I think that I'm going to be doing some nuggets here and there about prayer because there's so many questions about how to pray. Um, questions because there's so many different people praying in different ways. And what I mean by that is not necessarily that there's some type of a formula, but at the same time, we see people that are, you know, getting up and commanding their day, as they say. And it's not always things that line up with the word. Sometimes it's people uh, just declaring and commanding, you know, that they're going to be a millionaire or a billionaire. Or they're going to have this or they're going to obtain that. And the thing is, is that we have to be very careful that we are not going from being bold to being arrogant and almost being like God in our own lives, demanding things that are possibly not even the will of God for us individually. There's no scripture to back it up. And so we have to be very careful. We know that faith is powerful. We know God can do everything the Bible tells us, but we want to make sure that we are praying, lining up with the word of God, with the will of God. In fact, the first scripture that I want to look at today is going to be found in 1 John chapter 5. And I'm looking at actually verses 14 and 15. And what it says is, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And then it goes on to say that if we know that he hears us, then we already have the petition we desire. But notice in 14, it says this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, if we ask doesn't mean we're commanding and it has to be according to his will. And if it's according to his will and we ask him, it says he'll hear us. And if we know we, that he hears us, we already have the petition we desire. Which takes me then to uh, John chapter 14, the gospel of John chapter 14, verse 13. Jesus says, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Again, this is asking. And then the word says we have to ask according to his will. And then in James chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, actually I just want to focus on verse 6, but it says, but let him ask in faith, ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers, Wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. It talks about being double-minded and unstable. It says, don't expect to receive anything if you don't ask in faith, if you're wavering back and forth. So now we are to ask in faith, ask in Jesus' name, and ask according to his will. So now it has to line up with God's will has to be in faith and we do it in Jesus name what ask so everything is not a command and this is something that I will address later in another little nugget because there are certain things that we have been given authority in and that's authority over the devil that we have power over him Jesus says he gives us power over serpents scorpions and uh, the devil and so the, there are things that we have power Jesus tells us if we have faith as a grain of mustard seed that we can speak to a mountain tell it to move and it'll move to yonder place and nothing will be impossible. But that's another teaching. Right now, I'm talking about there are things that we ask. And we have to ask in faith, but we have to ask according to his will. And we ask in Jesus' name. This is significant because everything is not a, I got power and I'm going to command this or I'm going to lay hands on this or I'm going to make this happen because this is not the way this works. So what I want to do is give us a couple of examples. And the first example um, that I want to give us is we're going to look at, well, first of all, let me show you this. Um, in James chapter 4, James chapter 4, and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. But when we look beginning in verse 13, it says this, look here, 
You who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans and all such boasting is evil. So the King James says, with that, you know, we ought to say, if it's your will. So here we go. This is saying, you know, if I get up and command my day or I'm commanding my year and I'm saying, oh, you know, for instance, we know the new year is coming. Oh, in 2020, I'm going to here and I'm going to do business and I'm going to make a profit and I'm going to be a billionaire, a millionaire, and I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that. Well, some people say, well, that's faith. But is it faith or is it evil? Because here it says in the scripture, how do you know what your life's going to be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is if it's the Lord's will, if the Lord wills it, then this is what's going to happen. I'm going to do this or that. Otherwise, you're boasting about your own pretentious plans and all such boasting is evil. So let me show us two examples. The first example we're going to look at we're going to look at Paul. And Paul reminds us about the time that he prayed for the thorn in his flesh. And the Bible says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I'm just going to stop here. Paul had a thorn in his flesh. The Bible says, he says, I prayed and asked God three times, thrice, three times. He said, I besought him three times. I asked him three times that it would depart from me. But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. No. I'm not going to remove the thorn. You can't command it to be removed. You can't confess that it's removed. And this is the importance of prayer. It's that we have to have a relationship with God. Because the thing is, is that the Lord let him know, my grace is sufficient. So you have to have relationship. And what happens so many times is that people begin to pray. They begin to command. They begin to say things they hear other people say. And then when nothing happens, they don't know why. Because they don't have a relationship with God. So when God is trying to tell them something, trying to reveal something to them, trying to tell them why, or trying to tell them something different, they don't hear it because they've just been repeating something that they heard or they're saying something that sounds good. And they think that it makes it seem like they have so much faith. But in actuality, prayer is a conversation. You are asking God or you are talking to God and then he can reveal things and he talks back to us many times and he shows us things. Yes, there's things we have power over. Yes, there's things that he has empowered us and enabled us to speak to to speak about or confessing scripture to what he already said. But then when you come to things that, that are, you know, maybe God is doing something for a reason. Maybe somebody is telling you you're going to lose your job. And you begin to say, I believe in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to lose this job. I am going to get promoted. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to have that. And I'm going to have favor. And somebody else is leaving. But what if God has something different for you, something better for you? And you don't know the will of God. And you don't have that conversation. And you're not asking him to reveal or to show you but you just begin to demand what your flesh wants 
And this is talking about a thorn in his flesh. And when you think about it in the spiritual, there's often times that we are praying according to our flesh. And because we do that, or because people are commanding according to what their flesh wants, then they find that many times either the prayer isn't answered, or because they wanted it so bad, what they did was they pressed in and made it happen. They spent all their time trying to make something happen, trying to do something, and sometimes it happens, but it's not the will of God. So we have to be very careful in what it is that we're praying about. What is the motive behind it? And is it the will of God? Which takes us to our last verse of scripture because Jesus is always the greatest example. And when we look in Matthew 26, we see where Jesus is at the garden. Uh, I'm sorry. He's in the garden. I'm just looking at the verse here. And this is right before he's going to get arrested. Now, it tells us that he takes Peter and two sons of Zebedee with him. Uh, he has James, John, and Peter with him. And it tells us in verse 37, he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 38 says, Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. <coughs> Excuse me. And he went a little further, fell on his face, and prayed. This is Jesus. And he says, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Not as I will, but as you will. And then in verse 40, it says, He comes unto the disciples, finds them asleep, and says unto Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And then we get to verse 42. He went again the second time and prayed. The second time. This is Jesus. And he says the second time, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Now, we get to where he came and found them asleep again. Their eyes were heavy and he left and went again. This is the third time that he prays and he says the same words. Now, this is Jesus. Now, he knows why he's here. He already knows his assignment, his mission. He's already told his disciples what was going to happen to him. And he talks about the suffering and he talks about how he's going to die and he's going to raise back up. He already knows this, but yet and still he's in the garden and he's praying and he's saying, if it's possible, let the cup pass from me. If it's possible that I don't have to do this, let the cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thou will. Then it was, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, your will be done. There has to be a point where we realize everything is not going to go our way. It doesn't matter how much we command it, how much we pray and say that we believe it. There has to be a time that we realize that everything is not going to go the way our flesh wants it to. When we think about praying and we think about praying according to God's will and being able to confess and being able to have power, you're talking about things that line up with the will of God. These are prayers that Jesus knows why he's here. But according to the flesh, it's like, if I don't have to, if this cup can pass from me, but then it was, nevertheless, thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. There has to be a point when we realize that there could be a possibility we want something that doesn't line up with God's word. Paul was praying about something in his flesh. Remove it. Remove it. We want God to move people out of our life. We want people to move people out of our job. We want people, we want God to make somebody act right and act different. And we want all of these things because that's what our flesh wants. But we don't always stop and see what the will of God is. There's people that will say, well, I don't want to be around this person and I can't stand being over here. And, you know, I just want God to move them and to change them and to fix them. But maybe God is trying to fix you and change you. And when we begin to pray, 
without ceasing continuously praying about what God wants. God wants us perfected. He wants us holy. He wants us walking upright. He wants us to hunger and thirst after righteousness. He wants to seek first. He wants us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. He wants us to witness. He wants us to be a light. He wants us to be a vessel, an instrument of righteousness. He wants us to go forth and represent Jesus Christ and this kingdom. He wants us to preach the good news. And if we pray about things like that, God begins to reveal things to us that we would know what his will is. Because the Bible says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. But if you delight yourself in the Lord, your desires are not what they used to be. You're not just praying for stuff, for things. For You're not just praying for God. to. If you're praying for something, it's so that the kingdom is moving forward. It's so that lives can be changed, so souls can be saved. You're praying because Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. He says pray for more laborers. But that's not always what people in the church are praying for. So we need to ask and we need to ask according to his will and ask in faith and ask in Jesus' name. But we have to ask according to what lines up with God's will. And you can't be afraid to say, not my will, but thine be done. See, it's one thing when you're praying for someone to be saved. If you have a family member and you are believing for their salvation because the word says that God is not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance. He only sent Jesus to die on that cross so that people would be saved and have a relationship with him. That's why he sent his son to die. So it's his will that, that people come to a point of repentance. So you're praying according to his will. And so then you can fight the enemy with prayer and with praise and preaching the gospel so that souls are coming to Christ. But then when you start talking about, I'm going to be rich and I'm going to have this. And I, you know, in the name of Jesus, I want this and I'm laying my hands on that. There's no scripture to back that up. There's no scripture that tells you that you're going to be rich. There's no scripture that tells you those things. And so we have to be careful in that the Bible tells us over and over about asking. Asking. Even when it says you have not because you ask not. And then it talks about asking a miss. And it talks about asking for something for your own selfish, you know, desires. So we have to be careful. What's the motive? What are we asking for? Is it something that we know in scripture that God said? Is it something that he promised us? Has he given you confirmation? See, if he gives you a dream or a vision and he's giving you confirmation and he's ordering your steps and he's showing you things and you know that you know that you know that it's him and then you begin to believe him for the place for it or the resources for it or the help for it or the souls to be saved or whatever the case may be because God already showed it to you. He already confirmed it with you. He already told you. And so when you think about somebody like Abraham, God kept confirming with him, you know, giving him confirmation. Yes, you're going to be the father of a great nation. Yes, many nations. Yes, yes, yes. Look at the sand. You know, and so he gave him confirmation. So even though Abraham had to wait and wait and wait, he believed. And the Bible says he didn't stagger at the promises, but it wasn't something he was commanded. I'm commanded. Even though Sarai is, is barren, we are having a child. We, I command it. Her womb is open. I command it. He didn't do that. We have to know what the promises of God are. This is the thing that happens that makes Christians lazy and slothful is that we pray what sounds good. We pray for what we want, but we don't take the time to have relationship with God because when we have relationship with God, the Holy Spirit directs our prayer. And you will find that sometimes when you're asking God to change somebody else, if you're praying on a regular basis, if you're in communication with God, if you're seeking for God to make you who he called you to be, many times we will find out that while we're praying for God to fix somebody else, He's allowing the situation so he can fix us, so we can be humbled, so that we can learn how to love, so we can learn how to forgive, so we can learn how to minister to others, to help somebody else. And so we need to be careful. First of all, you can't command everything. And second of all, when you ask, we have to make sure it lines up with his will. And you can't be afraid that somebody tells you, you don't have to ask God's will. You just have to have faith. Sometimes you just have to have faith. Sometimes you need to say what Jesus said. 
Are we better than Jesus that he could say, not my will, but thine be done? And so let's be careful that we are uh, not praying amiss, but that we're praying intentional and on purpose and spirit led. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now for your word that is our instruction. We thank you. For those that are hearing this message now, help us, Lord God, to pray according to your will, to pray according to your word. Father, that our prayers, Lord God, would be heard. We know that sin separates us from you, that you will not hear. And so, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would cleanse our hearts, that you would remove anything from us that's not like you, that you would create in us a clean heart, renew within us a right spirit, and help us to have a mind of Christ and the ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. Help us to pray, Lord God, unselfish prayers. Help us, Lord God, to pray prayers that will be a blessing to others, that will save souls and change lives and cause us to become the men and women of God you purpose us to be. So God, thank you for continuing to perform the good work you began in us until Christ Jesus. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, the word says pray without ceasing. That means we don't just pray when we want to command something and we want something, but it means you keep praying and praying. And the more you talk to him, the more we get to know him, the more we delight in him, and the more our desires become his desires. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that what we're praying and what we're seeking Oftentimes, we will know that whether it's his will or whether it is not. And then those other times when we may not be sure, there's no real scripture that addresses that. We can ask him, not my will, but thine be done. Show me. He said he would show us things we did not know. So God bless you. Don't forget to share the gospel with somebody who is unsaved. Please share this message with someone that you think will benefit from this message on today. Don't forget that we have a wild movement watchman on the wall. We are intercessors. We pray Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're on Facebook Live, Tony Brook Brown. We're on Instagram Live, Pastor Tony Brown. 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. Please join us if you're able. I pray you have a blessed day in the Lord and continue. Continue to get this word in you so that you can walk in the word. God bless you. I love you to life and I'll see you next time.